in terms of like the debriefing of the session, I want to hear what you thought of it. Yeah, no, I thought it was nice. She hurt my feelings. I mean, I've started saying this thing because I read this Brene Brown and she's all like the power of being vulnerable. And so now I'm like, well, it hurt my feelings. That was cool. But yeah, I know. I, yeah, we, when you said I that. Just can't, I was going to believe that she was like, I don't know if he cheated on you or whatever. Like that part I don't of, remember if you had like presented, you know, the evidence yet. No, I hadn't because I didn't really feel like I needed to. Right. But when Great. someone like, accuses me of lying, like that's, that's, I mean, I guess she wasn't accusing me of lying. She was saying that like my, like my perception of events might not be what was really going on. And I'm kind of like, there was a Valentine's Day card not written out to me. I don't really need further proof after that. But yeah. she didn't know that. She didn't know that. So, and then obviously like, the other stuff too. So I was just kind of like, whatever. I never like whatever. But did that it's fine. shift it's your sort of valence for the rest of the session once that happened in terms of how you felt about her? No, actually, I think if I hadn't said anything, it would have. But mm -hmm. I honestly, I was proud of myself for being like, okay, let's stop there and let's discuss this because otherwise, yeah, yeah, it would have. Yeah. Because I don't like it when someone questions, like something that you know, it'd be like someone questioning my childhood. They're like, really? Do you really want to go there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was like. I mean, again, I don't spend gobs of time with you, but I thought when you did that, that was something newly characteristic. Like, I hadn't seen that before. You know, from yeah, all the yeah. times we have spent no, together. No, definitely. And I was like, I yeah. thought that was great. I mean, again, not Me to too. judge, but I thought it was really, yeah. I thought it was like, um, I like brave. Yeah, I know. Thank you for saying that. I mean, I, I'm not going to say like, whatever, but like, yeah, I thought it was like, I don't, I think I've just gotten more comfortable with therapists now to where I can be like, you know, let's, let's dial back the bullshit, but whatever. I don't know. But that's not to say that it was bullshit. I'm just saying like, it was like, I don't know. Well, it was like, you whatever. felt miss, you felt not seen in a certain like you felt not um not not seen but you do you know what i'm saying right you felt yeah like it's such an la thing to say i didn't feel seen i didn't okay, feel heard <laughs> i'm just like it's like okay we get it you okay but yeah okay, no, but you're you right felt that's misunderstood correct. you felt like misunderstood yeah, yeah. Yeah. i know no i know no, what you're saying yeah. but you felt misunderstood yeah yeah no it's it's true and i those are actually like that's those are very valid, valid ways of saying that i just always feel like okay Sorry. I remember when I was in treatment years ago, they said like one of the most av aversive. Okay, we're gonna... Thank you. Aw. Okay. <laughs> they, no, no, one, <laughs> one of the most aversive feelings is to feel like um, not understood. Seen or heard. Yeah. yeah. It's like, so it's, it's, and when they said that, it was like, oh, okay, well, I mean, how we, how we, you know, if you like verbally like attack someone for sort of, I mean, I think it's context dependent, but you know, it may not yeah. be the most effective thing to do to get yourself no, no, seen, no. but it's yeah. like hands down, okay to feel whatever you feel. Yeah, no, I agree. Unless they're like sociopathic or something, then I'm kind of like, we have to draw a line, but right. that's not the, that's not, that's yeah, not the that's, norm. Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so go ahead with your, your train um, of thought, like what you were gonna say before. Well, I was, I mean, I was curious, um, like how you felt at, if you could, if you noticed certain feelings you were having at certain points in the session and um, how you felt about having, allowing those feelings to exist within the context of the session. Yeah, no, so before um, I had met with her, I do this with my CBT therapist. I write down what I wanna talk about and I put it on a post-it and I slap it on my like desk over here. So when I'm meeting with her, I, I have like an outline of what I'd like to address. And I had done that already for the one that we had today. Wow. And so one of them was like a plan of action. And so I'm glad that we went in that direction towards the end because it definitely, that's what I needed. I don't, I mean, I can talk about you know, all this other stuff until I'm blue in the face. But at the end of the day, I really just want to get better. So whatever that takes, you know. I feel like since I've known you, you've always had a drive to get better. Don't you think you have? That's what I think. No, definitely. I, I think I think um, I was listening to this, um, not a podcast, but I was listening to a, like a YouTube channel. And first of all, this lady was like 
all the, this is where I got the term cluster Bs, and she was saying that they typically lack empathy. And I was like, and I wanted to like turn it off at that point, but as she did say with, um, with Borderlands that we're the most receptive of the cluster Bs to seek help, to want to like, to engage in like therapy and to want to be better, to seek self-improvement because obviously with NPD, and I know that you and I have had a conversation about this, but I mean, my experience with people that I would diagnose if I were qualified, they, they don't think that they have an issue. They think that anyone else does. And anyone that I would say, if I were qualified to say it, would have antisocial personality disorder, they just don't care. So with Borderlands and the ones that I've met, like we want to get better. We don't want to feel like shitty and we don't want to hurt other people. And honestly, I think Borderlands have more empathy than people that would be neurotypical. I don't know if that's the right word, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's my impression. What do you think? Um, I don't, I don't know. I, I definitely think that um, like the way my current therapist described um, borderline versus like narcissism was like borderlines are like this continuum like this and it, it's how close or far apart you are from someone and that feeling of closeness or distance is what generates a lot of this like these affect storms you know um, whereas narcissism is more vertical about power you know and That's who what, yeah, you're saying. and so I think there is something about this you know focus need meaning to relationships that probably has a lot of like empathic promise at very least you know if not in that in the present moment yeah. you know but it's just or yeah. potential you know if it's no, not yeah depending on its level of it's not of being right. realized no i completely yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. As I've gotten better, um, my friends that I was friends with before and then did a lot of not nice things to, and then we re became friends again, my understanding of them now and my ability to sort of recognize a m more of their wholeness is better now. So, like, I think I mm -hmm. was so in, in so much pain before and so wounded that I didn't. I couldn't be like, oh, well, this person has this struggle or this person yeah. is feeling this way or this will make them feel this way. So you maybe shouldn't do that, you know, or you maybe. Yeah. And I think I was so wrapped up in my own pain that I couldn't consider other people's. Would you say that it was just a consistent like thing where like kind of what you're describing where like you consistently couldn't take yourself and like kind of like put yourself in the other person's position? Or do you think it was just when you were like feeling disrupted I guess I think it was when I felt less secure in that friendship like yeah. or I felt they were in a better place in life than I was which most of them were by the way in certain like really ba basic yeah. developmental ways but like I think um it, it had to do way, with I'm not nodding because I agree I'm just yeah no I yeah understand what you're saying yeah, yeah yeah like I think it had to do with like how safe I felt in the relationship and if I didn't feel safe I couldn't, I, I wasn't like relaxed to see yeah. like uh, their wholeness in the same way. That's what, do you yeah. have that experience with people? When I'm mad, I have a very difficult time understanding yeah. their perspective. Yeah. I mean, but otherwise I can, to almost to a fault. But then like when, when that switch is flipped, it's not even that I don't understand it. I just don't care. Yeah. Like, I mean, in my defense, I have to be pushed to that point. I mean, do you feel that way? I mean, that might be just my perspective, but I mean, I really have to be pushed to that point. My sense, if you were to compare you and me, is you take a longer time to push to that point than I do. I think I'm yeah. like super, yeah. I was a very quick switch. Like, I think there were people that were in the safe, safe space and they would, you know, that would be very hard for them, them to push me to that point because I really did trust them and I really did trust like their love of me. And then there were the people that weren't. And those people didn't literally needed to like flick, do that the wrong yeah. direction. I'd be like, fuck yeah. you, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I, I like, yeah. And I, my, am no, I, I right about understand. that with you? Do you take just 
are, are there people that yeah, you give takes, less? Yeah, it, ta- it takes. It takes a long time. And I have to be pretty close to them, too. Like, I have to feel, like, violated at some level. Or, like, they've taken advantage of me. Like, something like that. I mean, so do you think that with the story that you were telling Karen about your boyfriend that cheated on you, there were warning, like, in other words, do you think he pushed you to, you know, in other words, it seems like you let stuff go, which we all do, by the way. And Am I right about that? I don't you know? even, I mean, I don't even have hard feelings about that. Like, if, if I wanted to reach out to him, I could reach out to him, but when that relationship was going on, I did let him do anything he wanted. And you know about that. So like Mm -hmm. anything he wanted, he could do. And like, I'm not like singularly wealthy, but like I was always paying for everything. And like, it was kind of like, I was always getting like the Ubers and just sort of that kind of thing, like wears me down after a while because I'm just kind of like, it's just not very gentlemanly. I don't know. And then, but I always let him have and do anything he wanted. But he was, like, really nice to me, too. I don't know. And even with the cheating, like, (laughs) this is so embarrassing. I, there had been, like, these, in this center console, like, I remember I was like, why would you have this? Like, it's like, oh, that's been in there that whole time or whatever. And then I remember, like, in the kitchen there were, um, like, tags from, like, uh, called Be Tempted. They sell it at Bloomingdale's and it's like a brand I think I've that I seen buy. That. Yeah, and it's like, so it's like lingerie and I'm like, why would there be tags in the kitchen? And I never said anything about it. So I thought he was wearing women's underwear. Like that's how warped my brain was to the point where like we'd gone to a movie and we're at the mall and I'm like, hey, if that's your thing, that's cool with me. Like that's not a problem. He's like, I'm completely comfortable with my sexuality. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> and then like once like my shoes, I had let, like, I had like this pair of like shoes that have like a weave where um, like they're woven in a way where they can stretch out. And I have um, like, you know, my foot's messed up. So like I have a, like a very um, keen perception of what's going on with like the shoes, right? And I remember I went back over there and I put them on and they were like really big. So like, I was like, this is weird. And I was like, maybe he was wearing my shoes. Like that's how like deluded I was. And then like, I don't know. I mean, maybe in my mind I knew something was up and I just didn't, I mean, even like, even when I had like, you know, like proof or whatever, I wasn't mad at him. I was just like hurt, but whatever. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. With the last guy, with Eric, like he definitely, definitely pushed me to the point where I was like mad and mean. And because I felt like definitely taken advantage of with him, but he tried his best, so. I mean, it would be so yeah. cool if you could see a good therapist who could like in vivo while you're dealing in these relationships, like to be able to go through the experience real time with someone who's really good at helping you de- like I know. figure it's, this out. Cause there's, yeah, cause there's so much like doubt on my end, like how much of it is in my head and how much of it is real and like all of these things. But um, I need to have somebody in between the CBT because I mean, after like, I mean the CBT, it only came up after the fact. Like I'm like, okay, so this happened and I pushed right. Eric away and I was like happy about, not happy, like satisfied. And then she like explained it to me, you know, like, but still like, I'd like to know before. Yeah. But then yeah. I feel like I'm okay when I'm not dating somebody. And I actually think I am okay when I'm not dating somebody. But when I'm dating somebody, I, I should probably have somebody three times a week, just twice, but that's still a lot. I don't know, like I was talking to Erica, you know, the CBT, and I was like, I don't even know if I should date somebody. Like maybe I just am constitutionally incapable of being in that kind of relationship. And that's probably okay. I like, I don't pay attention to school and I don't pay attention to like my needs. And I, I just like, whatever they want, that becomes what I want. And that's, you know, like that's not, So that's probably where a lot of the resentments come in. So it's like, this is you and this is them. And then do you like, for like, you lose your sense of what you even want? Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, yeah. Like with Eric, like he likes like really young girls that dress like in a certain way, like a very provocative way. And I was like, so then I started gravitating towards that. And then with the guy before him, um, it was like kind of like a, I mean, I didn't, I don't know. So then I started dressing the way he wants or like he really liked girls that had like light, 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 light blonde hair, like to the point where it's basically white. And I was like really looking into that. Would I look good with like white hair? You know, just like things like that. So, um, I mean, it, it seems like presuming there's a next time that you date someone, which I'm thinking there probably will be. Like, it seems like, it seems like it would be like, okay, I'm gonna get a therapist now so because the shit is gonna yeah. come up again. Like, it almost should be like a flag, oh, no, like because it's an opportunity, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, yeah. no, it's this, a way to yeah. study in vivo yeah. what's happening to yourself. No, that you, yeah, completely, definitely. Like, there's not a question about that. Like that, I, awesome. I think I'm, like with the TFP, I think um, I'm gonna look into that. It sounds like it's probably gonna be a lot to do on every level. Um, so I'll definitely look into that, but without a doubt, the second I start even thinking about dating somebody, which I'm not right now, so I don't have to worry about it, there will be serious therapy going on. Serious That's therapy. Awesome. 